dumbbell dot plot charts are an excellent chart style for showing the comparison between two data points because we can easily see the difference or progress that has occurred between those points. Now, often I see tutorials where these dumbbell dot plots are effectively static charts that we have to manually update. But if we use the right Excel techniques, we can make them fully dynamic. And that's what we're doing in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let's start here inside Excel and you can see we have a table with our data. It has our regions and then a year for 2022 and 2023 and then the values that we want to plot inside our chart. At the bottom, we have some additional data for the central region and this is what we will be using to add to our table to prove that this is a dynamic chart. Now the place we need to start is by building the calculations the calculations that will form the chart data. Because we want this to be dynamic, then these need to be dynamic array calculations. So this technique only works in Excel 2021 and Excel 365. The first calculation we need is for the label. We'll use the unique function equals unique. Open bracket, we'll select our region. I'll close that bracket and press return. So that's simple enough. That is our label. Next, we want to calculate the values for the first year. And the first year we've got here is 2022. We use equals, sum ifs, open bracket, and we want to sum the value where the region is equal to our E4 hash, so that's the spill range, and where our year is equal to F3. I'll close that bracket and press return. And that now gives us the values for 2022 for each region. Let's perform that calculation again for 2023 equals sum ifs. We want to sum the value where the region is equal to E4 hash and where the year is equal to 2023. We'll close that bracket and press return. Now in our chart, we will be using error bars. Now because we have some scenarios where our number goes from a lower number to a higher number and other scenarios where it goes from a higher number to a lower number, our movement could be positive or negative. And we are going to use positive and negative error bars. So we need to calculate what that positive and negative variance is. So in here, we'll type equals if open bracket G4 hash is bigger than F4 hash. In that scenario, we want G4 hash minus F4 hash. Otherwise, we want the NA function. We'll close that bracket and press return. So we now have our variance, but it shows NA in the scenario where column G is less than column F. So that's our negative movement. So that means we can also do equals if, open bracket, G4 hash is less than F4 hash. In that scenario, we want F4 hash minus G4 hash, or we want the NA function. We'll close that bracket and press return. So now we have positive or negative values. The next item we need is a label position. This is where we will place the label for our region. We're going to place this to the left of the dots. So therefore we always want the smallest value. So equals if open bracket F4 hash is less than G4 hash. In that scenario, we want to return F4 hash or G4 hash and we'll close that bracket. The final calculation we need is the position. We're going to be using an XY scatter chart, so therefore we need to know what our Y axis placement will be. For this, we're going to use the sequence function, equals sequence, and we want the rows of E4 hash, so that will give us four rows in this scenario. Columns is one. We want to start at four and then count down to one. So we will use rows E4 
for hash again, and our step will be minus one. We'll close that sequence and press return, so that gives us numbers from four down to one. If we had five results or six results, it would always have that highest number at the start and then count down to one. So that's all the calculations we need for this chart. Our goal is to make this chart completely dynamic. Now, unfortunately, because of the chart type that we're creating, we can't put all of this into a dynamic array that then connects to our chart in its entirety. Instead, we have to use named ranges so that we have a named range for each of our calculations. So let's start here. I'll select my first cell inside my first calculation. Then from the formulas tab, I can go to define name. I'm going to call this name label. And I'm going to set this with worksheet scope. So the worksheet is called example. So I've got example in that drop down box. Now, because I have that first cell selected, it's already populated the refers to area. What I'm going to do is add a hash on that so that it references the entire spill range and not just the first cell. And then I'll click OK. Now, I'm not going to go through the process for all of these calculations, but we do need to create a named range for each of these. So one called label, one called comparative for this range, one called value, for example, for this range, one called positive for this range, one called negative for the next range, another one called label position, and also one called position. So we should have a named range for each of those. And in the example workbook, you can see that I've already created all of those named ranges. So once we've done that, we're ready to start creating our chart. Okay, now let's create our chart. So I'm going to start by selecting our comparison values, then go to insert, and then on the scatter dropdown, I'll select the first chart there, which is a scatter chart, and then we'll drag that below our range there so we can see it. Now let's correct the data range for this. I'm going to right click and go to select data. I'll then have series one selected and I'll click edit. So my first series name is going to be my title there, so 2022. My X values should be that range or the spill range. However, if you remember, we already have a named range. So we can delete that entire area I'll press F3, that brings up all the named ranges that we have in our workbook. And our first range should be comparison. So that gives us the X values. Then we have the Y values. I'll press F3 again, and this time we want position. And then I'll click OK. Now let's add the 2023 values. I'll click Add. My series is G3. The X values will be my value named range, and my Y values will again be the position named range. And then I'll click OK, and then OK. Right, that now creates a chart that has the dots in the positions that we want to display them. Next, we want to create the line that connects the two dots. For this, we'll be using error bars. Let's start by selecting our comparison range. And then we'll click on the plus, go to error bars and go to more options. Now this will create vertical and horizontal error bars. We don't need the vertical bars. So press delete on those. Next, select the horizontal bars and then we have the format error bars pane. We want no cap and then a custom value and select specify value. In there, we can declare what our positive values should be. I'll press F3 to get our paste names box, and I want those to be the positive values, and then the negative values, I'll press F3, and that should be our negative named range, and then I'll click OK. And as you can see, we now have a dot that connects our lowest point with our highest point. So our dumbbell dot plot is really starting to take shape. Okay, now let's format our dots. So I'll select the first dot, and then I'll come across 
to the pane, and then I'll format the markers. So the markers are the small dots. And we want, in our marker options, we want something that's built in. We want a circle that should already be pre-selected. And let's make these size 14. For the fill, for the comparison, I want to select a light gray color because that is the comparison. So I'll select that option there and then we'll have no line. Now let's select our second dot. So this is the value, so what the value has become. And again, we want these built in, a circle. Let's keep these the same size. This time I want a solid fill. I'm going to select a more vibrant color. And again, I will select no line. So that's now formatted the dots that we have in our chart. Next, we want to add data labels for our dots. So select the first dot, then click on the plus, come down to data labels, and let's place these in the center. Then I will select my data label and then format the data label. It's currently set to be the Y value, but we want the X value. Perfect. We can now bold that data label and that's perfect. Let's do the same for our second dot. So we'll select that, go to the plus, data labels, and place that in the center. We can then select that data label, go to the data label options, make that the X value. Again, we'll make it bold, but this time let's set the font to be white. Currently, we don't know which pair of dots relates to which region. We haven't got that label in our chart, so let's add that in. I'll select my chart, right click, and then go to select data. Then I'll click on add. We want to add our label position. So my X values, I'll press F3, will be label position. And then the Y values, F3, will just be the position. OK and OK. And then we'll click OK again. You'll notice there's now a small dot where we want to place our label. Now it might be tricky to select that dot, so I can go to Format, and then in the drop down, I'll select Label Position. Then on the plus, we can add data labels, and we'll add that data label to the left. Fantastic, we no longer need that dot because that label has appeared. So I'll go to marker and select no fill and no line. Then I'll select the data label and then we'll change our data label options. So we don't want the X value or the Y value. Instead, we want the value from cells. When I select that, it gives me a dialog box. I'll press F3 to get the list of named ranges and we want to use the label. Then I'll click OK and OK again. And we now have our region label next to our pair of dots. The final step is to delete the chart junk that we don't need. So we don't need either of the major grid lines and we don't need either of the axes. So I can just click on those and then press delete. And that's it, our chart is now complete. We now come to the most important question of all, is our chart fully dynamic? I've selected the data at the bottom. Let's drag it into our table. Yes, we see that central is added into our calculations. Not only that, but central has been added into our chart. So if we get any more data, we can add it into our table and our chart will expand automatically for any new regions that are added into our data. And that's it. That's how we create a dynamic dumbbell dot plot inside Excel. We needed to use a few techniques around using a table that auto expands, but then we had dynamic array calculations, but also named ranges that we then use inside our chart. So all of these techniques brought together gives us this dynamic dumbbell dot plot chart. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to know how you can automate your Excel with these kinds of techniques, then why not head over to our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our courses. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.